this working? Yes. When I was young, I had a dream. And this dream grew with me for the first 18 years of my life. My dream was to be a doctor. I worked really hard at my scholastic years. I was a nerd in all the meaning of nerd. I spent my life with books, reading, studying, working very hard because I wanted to get that average that will allow me to enter the College of Medicine. Parallel to that, I loved writing. I used to write nice compositions, sometimes poetry, thoughts. So that was my life for the first 18 years. When I graduated from school with the nice average that I needed, due to some political reasons, my, the West Bank was occupied, I, my family decided that I cannot go and study outside Jordan. So I was stuck with the University of Jordan, which at that time had only three colleges. College of Science, College of Art, and College of Business. I remember myself entering the university. I stood there, what am I going to do? My dream of being a doctor has cracked. So I had to change my choices. I fetched quickly inside me and I thought, okay, I love writing, I love art. So I'll go and study English literature. This will help me to be exposed to other people's cultures. And at the same time, it, I started quickly to build another dream in me because I am a person who lives by dreams and targets and work very hard to fulfill that thing. So I said, if I graduate with a very good language and uh, a degree in English literature, then I will be able to work with one of the international humanitarian organizations. The four years passed, I graduated, I was very happy, now I'm going to fulfill my dream. To my happy luck, at that year, the Ministry of Education issued a rule that all English literature graduates are obliged to work as English teachers at government schools. This was a shock. I, I thought, I was very angry, I was upset. The least of my dreams was to be a teacher. But what to do? I thought, okay, I will submit myself to the rule and I will work as an English teacher. I spent four years of my life working as a teacher in English. I rebelled all the rules of teaching. I tried to put my own method, but I was not happy. Then one day I woke up after four years, I said, Maha, you're not happy? Quit. So I quit my work as a teacher. By that time, I was married. I had three kids. The eldest were two daughters, Ruba and Rowan. I think Ruba is here, Rowan is in Dubai. So one day I said, I started to work like voluntary work. I was going to uh, around Jordan, helping, uh, delivering food, medicines, trying to help anybody, because I have this passion to be with the people. So one day I took Ruba and Rowan to study music. And they started playing piano, and I used to stay with them when they had their class. I was fascinated by the movement of their little fingers on the keys and the tunes that were coming. So one day I was asking the teacher who was teaching them, and he's with us today, he's Mr. Ali. Ayit. I said, Mr. Ali, can I learn music? And he said, yes, you can. And I don't know why did I have the idea that music is only for little kids. So when he said this, I was thrilled with happiness. I said, I will study music. And then I made the decision. I didn't know at that point that this decision was the turning point in my life. Because when I started studying music, it was such a difficult, challenging thing to do. Music 
I, I decided I will do it, though it was very, very difficult for me. But music awakened all the challenging powers in me. And then I said, I will study it, and I graduated after four years. I started working with students, and then I had a little center. Music has taught me a lot. When I studied music, I learned three main things, which turned, steered my life in another direction. First, I learned the meaning of harmony. You should have harmony in order to be able to deal with music. Secondly, I learned the meaning of coordination, because you have to coordinate your five senses all together to be able to play a piece of music. Thirdly, and the most important thing, is that music opened my, wise, my eyes wide open on creativity. Why? Because when I learned music, the first thing I learned was A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Seven notes. These, from these seven notes, seven letters, all the music of the universe was composed. All the symphonies you hear, all the music all over the world is made from these seven letters. So I thought, my God, that's so creative. And I was on with my voluntary work, moving around. Now I started to see people in a different way. I started to see the creativity around me. I started to see the brilliant little kids who are less fortunate and they need somebody to support them. I started to see talents here and there. And then one day I woke up, I said, now I know my mission in life. My mission is to start my NGO in which I will adopt and help all these creative, brilliant kids, talented people, youth who have nobody to help them. And I discussed it with some of my friends and relatives who are as passionate as me to do this type of work. And on the 28th of August, 2008, Ibda was born. Ibda is my organization. And Ibda is an Arabic word, and this word means creativity. Ibda, besides adopting all these creative people, we, we succeeded within two years to adopt and help 40 brilliant people, brilliant brains of Jordan from all over the country. We supported them. We tried to put them on the track. We made exposure with them to the media. We are helping brilliant kids whose ages range between 5 to 20 and 22. And besides that, we made a small part for, or not even a small, for the physically and for the less um, physically and mentally handicapped people, for the special need people. And I made an experience. I taught them music, and I found that they have the soul for music, especially those with Down syndrome. And I'm, I'm proud to say that one of my physically handicapped students has graduated from the University of Jordan with a degree of music, and she's starting her life with music now. <laughs> music taught me, as I was teaching music, we started to make teams and bands. And these teams, they, they, the players learn, learned all together what is teamwork, what is the meaning of teamwork. And our players, our fantastic players, when they played and performed together, they come from different layers of society. But music managed to dissolve all these differences and they all work as fantastic teams. I don't want to talk to you more about creativity and ibda, because you can see us on the uh, website, 
www.ebda-jo.com. Uh, we are uh, now with 40 brains, and I will ask you, how do you see us in five years from now? I think, personally, and my colleagues, that in five years, Ibda will be the richest NGO in Jordan, not in money, but in, with brilliant brains that will change the face of Jordan. <laughs> I want to introduce to you my junior band with the youngest performer, Zaid Abu Hajle, on the sax, Haroon Jamil on the lead guitar, Yazan Jamil on the alto sax, Abdullah Khasawne on the lead guitar, Quddus uh, uh, Al Hiti, an Iraqi performer on the drums. Dalia Khattab, a fantastic pianist. And the one who did all this fantastic training is my teacher and my colleague, Mr. Ali Aid. <laughs> and the first piece that they will play is composed by Mr. Ali Aid, and it's their own piece. Thank you very much.